I have been asked, why did I take so long, more than two years, to act? It's a fair question. In retrospect, and certainly now knowing how things eventually turned out, I agree. I should have forced the issue sooner. But let me explain my general approach as well as my thinking at that point in time. There is no single template that applies to all extramarital affairs, but there can be at least three situations. The first situation is where the individuals involved will be talked to, and if they stop, the matter ends there. No further action need be taken. The second situation, where immediate action has to be taken. For example, when one party has supervisory power over the other party, and we have in the past taken immediate action in a few cases. Third situation, where the relationship raises some questions of propriety beyond it being an extramarital affair per se. The parties will be talked to, but the matter cannot end there. Even if the affair stops, some action has to follow. But what that action is and when it is taken depends on the nature of the facts and the boundaries that have been transgressed. The present situation falls into this third category. It's wrong. Mr. Tan and Ms. Cheng had to stop their affair. I told them to stop. In deciding what more should be done, consider this. Would we object to the speaker to having the Speaker being married to an MP? Would we object to having a Speaker being married to an MP? I think the answer is no. That would be perfectly all right. There is no direct reporting line between the Speaker and an MP. Thus, an open, legitimate relationship between the Speaker and an MP is not in itself objectionable. Hence, this situation of the Speaker having an affair with an MP does not fall into the category where immediate action has to be taken. However, the Speaker has some official capacity vis-à-vis -vis MPs. An extramarital affair between him and an MP is therefore problematic. It puts other MPs and staff in an awkward position, and it is just not proper. After I spoke to Mr. Tan in November 2020, he told me that the relationship would end. I took it to be so. I therefore felt there was some leeway to take some time to decide what further steps to take. In this context, the possible actions that could have followed were on the basis that the extramarital affair had stopped, I would have asked Mr. Tan to step down as Speaker sometime before the end of the term but in a way which would reduce the public embarrassment to him and his family. As to whether one or both should also resign as MPs, I hadn't decided at the time, but quite likely both would have had to leave at some point. But give, by giving the matter some time, I had hoped to give them a softer exit and save them and their families the pain and embarrassment that they are suffering now. I place much weight on protecting their families, perhaps too much. Regrettably, in the end, Mr. Tan and Ms. Cheng did not stop the affair and both had to go. On reflection, as I said, I should have forced the issue earlier, certainly before midterm. 